I started my journey actually at South Dakota State University and ended up getting a degree in botany because I like the study of plants. Then I spent about 20 years with the USDA and most of it with ARS and doing research. Uh, I was the technician under the research ground with Shannon Osborne in Brookings, South Dakota. And so we focused on uh, no-till, mainly diverse rotations and how they impact crops. And then that transitioned into a lot of cover crop research, well ahead of the popularity I think we're seeing with cover crops, especially in South Dakota. I'm the agronomist for Olson Custom Farms now, based out of Hendricks, Minnesota. But we have farms in, in South Dakota as well. Before I got to the farm, they had acquired a small seed business, and so they started raising some certified oats and uh, spring wheat. With me joining the farm, we had other crops like sunflowers, and then of course corn and soybeans, a little bit of alfalfa hay, and then they have forages that are devoted to the, to the feedlot operation. And so one of the, the first opportunities that I seen joining Olson Custom Farms was to stretch our rotation out, to take that power diversity and make it work for us because it, it, it's free. It just involves more management but that's what I'm at the farm for, is to help with that management and execute those cropping plans. So now we're trying to move from not just corn soybeans, but rather a corn soybean small grain, a cereal crop. Right now that's oats, spring wheat, or winter rye. So now we've got this diverse set of situation where the corn sees a different previous crop, but also a different moisture balance in the soil. The community that we set up for it in the soil with the cover crops, I look for many benefits to come out of it. It's a little too early to tell, but since I come from research and have seen it be successful, I'm pretty confident that we can be successful. And like any management, we have to take into account the cost of our cover crop seed and what it costs to seed, but I'm looking at it that we'll offset those expenses with reductions in applied inorganic fertilizer. That's my goal for the farm, is to bring our level of applied inorganic fertilizer, reduce it by 40 to 50%. That would be a good goal. It's an ambitious goal, but I think it's very attainable.